Hello, let's have a look at the Boker Plus Subcom Friction Folder. Now this is an interesting little knife from Boker Plus. Now being a Boker Plus model, it is made in Taiwan. Now let's have a look at the knife. Now it looks like a frame lock, however it is not. This is actually, a, as I said, it's a friction folder. But it's also a ball joint. Now, what do you mean by a ball joint? You can see there's a small sort of hole in there. Now there's a ball in this frame. Uh, which looks like a frame lock, there's a little ball in there that sort of falls out of place which is how you get that click and it does the same in the closed position so even though this is a friction folder it's it's not coming open uh, in your pocket now I'll give you another example of a, a ball joint if you're not familiar with it here's the CRKT Long Ma this is also a ball joint knife now it's not a slip joint because there's no back spring but it is an unlocking knife you can hear a similar sort of click and here's another knife that you'll probably be very familiar with the Spyrico Serge Panchenko dog tag folder also a ball joint in fact let's just do a quick comparison here I think it is actually worth comparing to the Spyrico dog tag folder because this is actually a neck knife. Again, I'll get to that later on. Now, the blade length on this is about 2 inches roughly. Um, and as I said, it's non-locking, therefore you can legally carry this in the UK without a good reason, which is great, in fact that's why I bought it. And it's going to be legal to carry in most of Europe as well, which is great. We have one... I think it's a G10 scale, I'm not sure. Another side is obviously steel. Well, a lot of um, jumping or serrations, whatever you want to call that. In fact, it's all over the place. It's obviously right on the top here. It's on both the tang and the blade and both of those scales. On the bottom of the knife and on the sort of... I'm just going to call this... Should I call it a lock? I'm not really sure. I'm just going to call it the uh, metal scale. We've got the, the serrations, the jumping on the metal scale as well. And for whatever reason, there's also the same jumping on the back. Now, I don't really know what kind of blade shape you'd call that. Possibly a really fat spear point. I mean, kind of similar shape to a Swiss Army knife. I mean, can you see where I'm going with that? I mean, obviously this is a lot wider. Anyway, um, in fact, and there you go, for comparison, here's the Victorinox Compact, which is the same size as the Spartan. Now, I was saying that this is a neck knife, which it is. By the way, you'll notice that there's no pocket clip, there's no possible way to attach a pocket clip. In fact, on that note, I should mention that there are two other very similar versions to this knife. There is a version that is actually a frame lock, which... For what it's worth, I think they use the exact same handles, um, except on this one, I don't remember if I mentioned this before, but they've just extended that lock so it goes over the blade instead of stopping in front of it, which is how you end up with that ball joint. Um, so they do a frame lock version and they do the ball joint version, but of course this is the friction folder, which is both a friction folder and a ball joint. On that note, this is actually a very safe knife in my view because it's a ball joint, it's a friction folder and your finger locks that in place. So there's, there's pretty much no way you're going to close this knife on yourself. I mean, you've got to, you've got to be doing some... I mean, I just I don't, I don't know how you could possibly close this on yourself. I mean, this, this tang extends about half the length of the handle. And between that and the fact that your finger's in the way, I mean, I don't really know how you could... I mean, you'd have to be doing some serious work or you really have to be trying um, to close this on yourself or, you know, beating on it with a hammer. And even then, I'm not really convinced. That says, sometimes when you close it, um, it kind of pinches your finger, which isn't nice, but it's not exactly painful either. Of course, there's a lanyard, a lanyard hole, which is always um, a good thing in my view. Screw construction with Torx, uh, with Torx screws, which is... Well, uh, it could be a positive or a negative, just depends on your own your own um, preferences, I suppose. But Boker does include a small tool for that, which is good. Um, so you can take it apart if you want to. Now, 
like I said, it is a friction folder because they also give you this Kydex neck sheath, which the knife fits into really nicely. In fact, this is again part of the reason why I bought it. I quite, I quite like this. I don't actually have any uh, neck knives other than the Serge Panchenko dog folder, a uh, dog tag folder, which I've never really, I mean, I've worn it a few times, but I'm not really keen on carrying this because. <laughs> These things cost nearly a hundred quid now. I mean, I don't think I paid quite that much for it, but my God, when I look on Heine Haynes and I see it's about ninety-five pounds, I'm thinking I cannot be walking around with this thing hanging around my neck on a small, you know, chain like this. I mean, I have had this fall off. Um, you know, I've had the had the uh, chain come undone, and this actually fell on the floor. So after that, I've kind of decided, nah, I don't really want to carry this. This thing, on the other hand. This thing is £35. £35 for a UK legal carry pocket knife slash neck knife that is this safe. I mean, no lock on this thing. I mean, this thing is far safer than a Swiss Army knife. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with Swiss Army knives. I absolutely love them. In fact, they're my, um, they're my favourite knives out there, but they, they close fairly easily. Now I've never had a Swiss Army knife actually close on me and uh, cause an injury, but with something like this, there's absolutely no chance of that. I mean, with your with your finger choil, the um, the extended tang, and obviously the ball joint. I mean, even the ball joint is is, is pretty pretty, for lack of better wording, tough. I think, but again, with your with your thumb and your finger being in the way of this thing, this is. I mean, that's not going anywhere. And again, just for comparison, CRKT Long Ma. I mean, you can see how easily that opens and closes. I mean, even even with your finger in the way, I mean, it could still open and close fairly easily. I mean, now the chances are it's not going to close unless you're piercing something with any of these knives. But how much pressure are you putting on it when you're piercing it? And I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that. I mean, unless you're stabbing something with it, in which case, you know, why, why are you stabbing something with a knife? It's not really for that. So, you know, I mean, if you're if you're ramming it into something, maybe stabbing it in a tree, which, you know, this isn't for, I think you'll be fine. But I think, I think this, um, this little Kydex sheath is absolutely excellent. I've wore it on my neck for a day. I do really like it. However, it's a little bit heavy. Not sure on the weight on this thing, but to have this on your neck, dangling about chest height, I mean, to me, it's just a... To be fair, though, I don't really like wearing things around my neck anyway. In fact, I don't like jewellery. I don't like wearing necklaces, rings, bracelets. In fact, I've got a Leatherman Tread bracelet that I bought pretty much when it was released in the UK, and I've barely worn it because it just... It's uncomfortable, it's heavy, and it's hard to get anything done with it, I think. I mean, if you're, if you're um, working on a project... I find it just gets in the way. Um, now, I do have some more to say about this knife before I, I end this video. The watch pocket on your jeans. This knife actually fits perfectly in... <coughs> excuse me. This knife actually fits perfectly in the watch pocket of your jeans. Now, I don't know about any other brand of jeans, but a pair of Levi's. Um, I've actually used a steel rule to measure the depth of a set of Levi's and it is about three and a half inches give or take well would you look at that now the tang on this knife if it's in the watch pocket of your jeans sticks out maybe about that much now I'm pretty sure that could be forgiven uh, I can certainly for, uh, forgive that I mean and you can still get your hand in your pocket fairly easily I mean this is a really flat knife so you barely even notice it's there I mean I dare say you can go around your day um, with this in the watch pocket of your jeans and not even notice it's there, which is definitely a good thing because it's not you know getting in your way. I mean that's part of the problem um, with EDC is sometimes your gear gets in the way and it can kind of throw you off carrying it. Well, this is quite a small compact knife. Yeah, it's got a decent bit of blade to get whatever job it has done. Now, a dedicated use for this knife, I'm not really sure. I mean. I don't think this is going to be any good for cutting for it, which is one of my main uses for a pocket knife, so... Then again, I've not tried it yet, I've only had this knife for about two days and I've not had fruit in a while, so... 
can't really comment on that. And this is definitely going to be no good for uh, whittling with wood. I did try it a little bit. You can kind of do it, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. And it's really not suited towards that. Now, speaking of which, I forgot to mention the grind. Now, just having a look at it and feeling it, to me, this is a, a shallow, hollow grind. I probably should have probably should have checked what kind of grind this is first but to me this is a shallow hollow grind and of course you can see there's a bit of, of a, a swedge or a false edge here which obviously is completely non-functional non that is just an aesthetic thing and if you're the, one of those people who cares personally I don't it's a 440c steel what difference that makes I don't know and the final thing I'd like to answer uh, Sorry, the final thing I'd like to say on this knife is, believe it or not, you can actually fit this knife in your wallet. I mean, if you open up your wallet, I mean, it fits pretty well in your wallet. Now, my wallet is empty at the moment, but I did try it with some cards uh, in there, and it's still fine. I mean, of course it's going to add quite a bit of weight to your wallet. But that, I mean, to me, that's pretty good. I mean, you can carry it in your pocket, you can carry it in your wallet, you can carry it around your neck. This is quite a versatile little length, I think, in terms of carrying. And one other thing I'd like to do before closing up, um, before I forget, is just a comparison to a Zippo because a Zippo is another one of those uh, common items that a lot of our, um, a lot of us EDC guys uh, like to have. So here's just a comparison to your normal standard Zippo. So it's quite close in comparison. I mean, it's definitely a lot thicker than, uh, sorry, a lot um, thinner than a Zippo. Height-wise, a little more, especially with that tang. Um, but yeah, that's all I've got to say on the matter. So I hope you enjoyed that. This is, once again, the Boker Plus Subcom Friction Folder. I hope you enjoyed that. If so, perhaps give me a like, maybe subscribe. Um, before I forget, Leave me a comment, right? Because most of the most of my comments I respond to. So if you've got anything you'd like to say, um, any questions, constructive criticism, whatever, I'll probably reply. Um, I would say about ninety five percent of the comments, probably more that I, um, that I receive on this channel, I do reply to. So uh, if you've got anything to say, drop it in the comments. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully, see you again soon.